Good morning everybody and welcome to a rather cloudy and chilly at Cadwell Park for the second day of the Caterham weekend. Starting off the day is the Motor Caterham 7270R Championship, their second race of the weekend. The first one was won by car number five, Stephen Lyle. Very close championship battle with Harry Eyre, who starts from sixth position following a bit of a rough time yesterday. Stephen, great win, well done. Thank you. So, uh, he's still targeting Harry for third place in the championship or is it just a case of let's see the season out on a high? Yeah, we, uh, we didn't even realise until halfway home last night <laughs> <laughs> but Dad said Harry didn't do too well because yeah, you want to have a look at the points and we looked at it and went if I win it and Harry's fifth I think we get third but um, hey third's third I mean yeah, for us you go for a championship I'm not too worried whether it's third or fourth but third's always better I suppose. <laughs> Fair play. So, uh, is it uh, the the three tens you're aiming for next season round? Yeah, I mean we only we missed the first round of the year, put us out the championship, and um, then a non-finish at Brands. Uh, it'd be nice next year to go for a full-on attack of trying to win a championship, do some winter testing, and uh, yeah, three ten. Awesome stuff. Best of luck then for today and for next season around. That's car number five, Stephen Lyle, starting from the pole position following the win yesterday. Starting on alongside him, number 34, Blair McConaughey, the uh, championship leader. Blair! So bring it home in second position. Is it just a case of looking after the car and getting it home, or are you still gunning for the top spot? Uh, definitely gunning for the top spot. Definitely gunning for the lap record. Gunning for everything. <laughs> yeah, just going for it. So it's, it's never a case of let off the gas, even though it's the last round of the season? Uh, I think the championship is in the bag, so... I'll uh, I'll see what I can get today. Just <laughs> just have fun. Good man, good man. Best of luck then for today. Uh, score well for next season. It's their choice if they go up to the three tens. There's no automatic uh, promotion or anything like that. But uh, it's still obviously they want to see the season out on a high. Starting from third position is Wesley Payne in the 38 car. Oh, we've caught you by surprise. Yeah, yeah I'm still getting ready. <laughs> so I'm a little bit. Behind <laughs> well, they haven't opened the gate. Oh, they just like I said, they've just opened the gate. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll let you climb into your car. I think it'll be a bit rude of us to uh, to delay you from the important part of getting ready for the race. So uh, they haven't given the indication yet. So they're not leaving track. Car number eleven, Carl Jones, second in the championship. He's also just getting ready. So uh, this might be also in a, inopportune for us. I think we might again leave Carl alone. So the car's just started. Oh, he's got his helmet on. They've yet to release people onto the track. We'll we'll move on because he is still getting ready. It's quite an important part of a of a race preparation. He's just making sure everything's strapped up, helmets on, etc., etc. And you know you don't want to uh, interrupt the mental preparation these drivers go through. Car number sixty-one is Angus McLean, who's a, a, recent, a late joiner to the season. Angus, Morning. well. Obviously, you, you joined the season a little bit late, but I think it's fair to say you've made a fair decent impact in the in the races you've taken part in. I've been enjoying it, so I'm still just racing as a guest, just getting the getting the feel of it, and hopefully we're doing a full championship next year. Well, is it in the 270s, or are you thinking about the 310s next well, year? 310. 310. So going up to the 310. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, where, uh, where you, you've, you've gotten a bit of an idea of where you sit in the pecking order. Is it, um, uh, is it the podiums? Is it the wins you're aiming for? At the moment, for this race, I'll just be trying to hold on to the fast guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good man, don't blame me at all. Best of luck, Angus, for this race and, of course, the next uh, season along. They've yet to call the cars out on track, so let's have another chat with another driver. Car number 55 is Harry O. We mentioned he's third in the championship. Harry! Yesterday didn't quite go according to plan, it would seem. No, um, in testing I sprained my wrist, so I'm sort of driving, driving one hand behind my back, uh, quite literally. So, yeah, I need to try and finish a bit higher today, but hopefully I can deliver. I mean, these things might be light, but this is a very difficult track, and you're, you're driving a win in an injury. That's very dedicated, sir. Yeah, it's the worst possible track, I think, pretty much in the UK to have that kind of injury. But yeah, the third place in the championship is at stake, so can't stop now. Fair play. Best of luck, Harry. You can hear the engines rise. The uh, whistle's been blown. The cars are coming onto track. Over to Scott Woodwiss in the commentary box for the ra first race of the day. The BRSEC Caterham Race Weekend is the finals weekend to try and crown a few more 
provisional champions. We did so just about yesterday, and there's still more action to come. It's not just cage rooms in the mix, we've also got the Fiestas and the City Car Cup. So all sorts to happen today. Scott Woodward here in the commentary box, once again joined by uh, my good friend, Ray Capable co-commentator Chris Hutchinson, who, as we mentioned yesterday, should be racing out there this weekend, but unfortunately had a bit of a unfortunate incident in practice. So the silver lining is you're on comms next to me, and of course it's uh, a brilliant uh, final weekend, obviously for all involved who are going for the championship. And so this is going to be another interesting one where the battle seems to be just about wrapped up for the title, but for second place downwards, it's still anyone's guess in terms of how close it could be. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, like you say, a bit of a, uh, a silver lining to be here rather than out on track. I'd obviously rather be racing, but it's uh, it's it is what it is, and, and it's great to see the from a, from a different. A different sort of angle of, of, of looking at how it looks from the outside in. It's, it's, it's quite intriguing. And like you say, Blair's already wrapped this one up, but we have got a plenty of intrigue between Carl Jones, Harry Air, and Stephen Lyle as to where do the rest of these podium positions go? The, you know, the, this is the whole season's been building up to this moment. This is their final race of this season. And as you heard Blair in the in the car beforehand, he is absolutely ready to go and win this one and, and take it away as the champion. But I know that Lyle has been, you know, super quick at, at, towards the end of this season and, and you know, really consistent. Probably had the best tail end of the season of anyone at the moment. And uh, uh, he'll be looking to take that second win for sure. Yeah, and it's been quite great to see some of these regular drivers towards the front and drivers like Wes Payne and Carl Jones and Harry Yeh have all been up in the mix. But it's just been, Blair's been that driver where because he's been so quick and he's been up there on the pace battling with the likes of Tom Willis the last couple of years. He's shown the pace, he's proven that he can hang with Tom at the front and even in the races where Tom entered as a, as a guest you could evidently see that Blair have made such a big stride over the winter from Road Sport into 270R and he really has taken his championship by the scruff of the neck and made it his own this year. Yeah, yeah, that's just they're setting off on their green flag lap. Um, yeah, absolutely. He's been given that opportunity, hasn't he? He's been sort of set free by that and, and really taken that by the scruff of the neck and off, off he goes. He's, you know, he's absolutely been uh, a class act this year, um, as we've been saying, but he hasn't had it all his own way. I mean, the, the scores and the results, whilst they've all been sort of, you know, ticking over nicely for him, he has had to fight for them on quite a few occasions. And, uh, and OK, he has disappeared down the road a couple of times, but it's, it's really not been the, that's the exception rather than the rule. So the car's now headed off on the formation lap on this really beautiful autumnal uh, Sunday morning. The sun is still rising in some cases this morning, so it is, but um, lovely sort of uh, beautiful autumnal weather this morning for the drivers to compete. Nice and clear, nice and sunny. This should be a really nice backdrop for what's going to be, hopefully, a mega championship finals day for Caterham and Co. So the cars are on the formation lap. The grid is set by the results from yesterday. So whoever wins uh, the race where Stephen Lyle, of course, starts on pole position to, for race number two as a result. And then we go further down as, as was. So there's David Morgan, who's starting in ninth place on the grid. Pole position is on the outside of the front row, so it's the driver's left on the left-hand side of the circuit. And this circuit, Campbell Park, is always a driver's favourite. It's, it's, it's winding, it's twisty, it's narrow in some places, plenty of undulations. There's a reason why they call it the mini Nürburgring of the north, because the characteristics are very similar to the famous Nordschleife in terms of it's up and down, it's all over the place. There are jumps, there are leaps, there are swoops, there are dips, there are all different kinds of corner cambers and undulations. It really is an incredible circuit that pretty much since this entire uh, main layer has been put together back in 1961 has pretty much remained unchanged for what 60 plus years and, and it's the first time I've been here this weekend I was mentioning yesterday and and I, whilst I've been on the sim and and I've seen this sort of I've seen plenty of racing here over the years in the bikes as well um, to actually drive around it for the first time is always quite a shock as to how you know the cameras whilst they do a great job of trying to show you some of the gradient it's not until you've driven on it that you really appreciate it and, and when you're low down in a caterham the caterham is really sort of it's only a waist high car even at full height so is that you're really low down there and, and you can't see over the banks to the left and right so it really feels like you're in a tunnel some places where you're heading out is brilliant just making their way up onto the grid. Uh, we'll quickly run you through the grid uh, as it stands. So here it is on the grid. Stephen Lyle then, as a result of his victory yesterday, starts on pole position. Alongside him is the provisional champion, Blair McConaughey. But it's Wes Payne and Carl Jones, both bidding to try and take a victory to prevent him round off the 2021 season. Angus McLean, who's ending his uh, guest appearances with hopefully a strong fifth place from the grid. Harry Ayer's got some work to do from P6, but he's always a contender to hit the top spot. Nick Albones and Alan Curtis drove well through the field, and they'll start on the fourth row of the grid, seventh and eighth. David Morgan and Daryl Cresswell then round up the top ten and then to the second half of the grid it's Michael Curley starting 11th followed by Tim Steele alongside him in 12th on the grid Duncan Cook and Fraser Jones then comes next uh, Fraser Jones is actually yes, 13th and then it's Duncan Cook starting 14th then the remainder of the grid as they start to form up in the background it's John Cox, so Richard Hoare and John Cox 
followed by Roger Gaunt and Peter Wales, and then Lydia Gould and Oliver Smith, who retired yesterday, starting from the back of the grid. But Oliver will certainly want to pick his way through, as he has come on quite strong in these last couple of weekends in this 270R season. So the last couple of the cars just about getting into position. They'll get the green flag at the back and then the five second board will be up. And then the red lights will come on to kick off our second part of our Caterham finals weekend here at Campbell Park. The last meeting of the season for Caterham Motorsport. Five second board does go up. And so Stephen Lar will be looking for win number four. Or provisional champion Len McConaughey wants to round it off with a win. Red lights are on, all set to get underway. And we are underway in racing, although there's a couple of well, two cars that didn't quite get away properly. And as they get head down towards turn one, a couple of cars got a bit caught out at the start. Then they're three, four, pressing this contact, the mid pack. One car sweeps across and just about holds onto it. I think it was a bit of confusion because I saw that it wasn't the red lights, it was the it's yellow lights that came on the side. So yeah. it, and there was yellow flags being waved as well. Apart from that, everyone seemed to get a wave. So there's a bit of confusion at the start, but neither of the front row men are leading. It's now Carl Jones that leads the way. Harry Ayres up from sixth to second, but already under pressure from Alistair Lyle, whereas Payne is fourth. And Blair McConaughey is down to, I think, fifth, even lower than that fifth position. I think it was possibly a strong start. It was Alan Curtis coming up from 8th up to 5th position. Yes, he has. So, down up towards Park Corner for the first time. Lyle back into the lead. Cut Jones in 2nd place. Air is now in 3rd. And there's the come through. Payne is 4th. And it's a Tim Steele in 5th position. So, that start really did catch up a lot of people, including us for a moment. I think possibly someone maybe put their hand up the signal they might have stalled and might not be able to get underway. Then they managed to refire themselves back up again. And then the race got underway. It's a bit of confusion there, Chris. Let's see whether anything happens because of that. Because obviously there was some confusion on the start line. And I'm not sure, that, like you say, that that was the actual red lights going out. It looked more like the orange. And, and it, it definitely caught some people out, didn't it? So, I'm wondering whether they'll sort of do the radio and backwards and forwards and maybe we'll see a restart here. But anyway, whatever, we've got a race going on at the moment and it's been a big shuffle up, so there's some work to be done. You can see a red flag flying on the screen there. So obviously, yes, that has now, they are putting the red flags out. They're going to try and get them to stop on this grid. Yeah, well done, everyone has, has seen that now, I think. Yeah, by the looks of it. So confusion at the start of that race uh, in terms of whether or not there was someone who had stalled or not. But it was uh, definitely the yellow, yellow light uh, that, that was shown on that start yeah. entry. It wasn't the red light there. So there was uh, maybe the wrong button pressed, or like you say, maybe someone halfway down the field did have their hand up, and that's why they uh, uh, were hoping to delay it. So they'll reform back onto the grid. They'll put them, of course, back in their original grid positions. And it's a reprieve for both Alistair Lyle and Blair McConaughey. So they will come back around and form up. Well, they'll initially park up on the top of the straight and then they'll get to reform them around in grid position. Alistair Lyle being Stephen Lyle's brother. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Here we go. Yes, yeah, so we, we, we'll get everything reset now back to his absolute uh, uh, square one. So this will be a, a complete restart. I imagine they'll also do the formation lap as well, given that we are having to re-grid and get everyone in the, the right order. Mike's used to his first thing in the morning, and I'm thinking that Alistair Lyle is another driver who used to race, I think Rovers back in the day, so that's the reason I was getting confused. Stephen Lyle, <laughs> rewind, correct myself, uh, he will get another chance from pole position. But again, again, they're going to regrid everyone up based on where they were originally set to start, based on their race one finishing positions. So, at least, uh, maybe that was a test of concentration first thing in the morning. Are you concentrating? Yellow lights, red lights, but then it looks as though that I they keep getting took corner names wrong, don't I, Scott? And you never correct me on them, so I should really be cheeky. <laughs> because I don't want to make you feel bad, that's why. Uh, anyway, um, no, it's, it's, this should be interesting to see. As Blair McConaughey, I think he's, he's having a small conversation saying, did you that spot that start or did I? So just a quick chat with uh, Wes Payne and Carl Jones as he squeezes his car back to the front row. And I imagine what they will do is they'll put them off on another formation yeah. lap and make it clear this time. Right, five second board. Now watch, the, only go when the red lights go out. Do you know what? Good uh, shout out to all the drivers there for avoiding all that incident. That could have been, uh, you know, you know, they, they put the yellow flags out very quickly on the start line because obviously some people were starting and some people weren't. Um, but yeah, it was it could have got very messy. That's so a great job to all the drivers for avoiding all, all that. Yeah, we, we have seen it once or twice before in recent years when um, drivers have gone to do it to go for a start, but then because they've either misjudged the signal to go off on the formation lap or misjudged signal in terms of that they've someone's jumped at the front of the grid and then as a result of that it's caused a problem where everyone else thought well you're jumping i'm jumping and they all start to go and so it, it's down to the driver's responsibility to realize that obviously there has been a mistake and therefore it's their responsibility to recognize the flags and the boards around the circuit so if there is a red flag like thankfully everyone did to make sure that there isn't you know the, the worst doesn't bear thinking about but to make sure that there isn't any kind of incident and whilst it was incredibly close where well, there was a little bit of uh, contact mid-pack as well it was indeed very tricky. So yeah, we're going to have a green flag formation lap. So yeah, they'll set them off on another formation lap once again then. And Stephen Lyle. Set them off on the grid for their 
second formation lap of the morning. So they've had one adrenaline buzz already, so now they've got to get themselves ready for, for the next one. Just everything reset now. We've got full 30 minutes on the clock, so there's no, no laps being removed from this lap race at all, or time being removed. And they just do go through their normal routine of getting, uh, getting themselves prepared again. Yeah, getting some more heat and pressures into the tyres, and also a bit of heat into the brakes as well, because one thing you don't want to do is approach the first corner with cold brakes, otherwise uh, they won't be as effective as they would. But at the same time, you have to find the optimal range, both in tyre ty temperature and brake temperature, because too cold or too hot, and they won't be as effective, they, they will start to uh, hamper you in terms of performance. You have to find just that sweet spot right in the range, in sort of, not necessarily the middle, but kind of the range where it's, it is the optimum amount of performance that we'll be able to get in terms of the temperature. So, and that's a key thing to do. And that's why the formation that for some people, some choose just to kind of just drive around and just a little bit of loose sort of, um, loose weaving, where some take it more seriously, more aggressively throw the car from side to side and a bit more sort of, start stop in terms of braking accelerating it's all down to a driver's choice as long as you're doing it safely you can kind of take the formation that within reason any way you like but it, it, drivers approach the formation that differently compared to the confidence in their setup the confidence in the car you know what kind of tire pressure they might have or how their brake bias is set or any other factors that they might have on the car so each, there's not going to be one, there won't be an identical formation lap. Each driver is going to have a different system or a different way of approaching this lap to get the temperatures up before they get the race underway. And obviously, your job is to get the front temp tire temperature up so that when you actually may go to turn into turn one, it actually does turn for you. And the rear tire temperature is quite critical, especially off the start, because if you're a couple of degrees or you know a couple of bit of temperature or pressure higher or lower, it makes a big difference to how much grip you've got off the line and therefore how much wheel spin you've got to anticipate uh, and work towards. So, yep, it's a really important job to get your your, um, your green flag lap sorted and sometimes when it's really hot weather you might also want to start protecting your tyres a little bit um, uh, rather than sort of wear them out on the on the, on the formation lap but yeah it's a, it's important everyone has their own sort of way of doing it and some people seem to get it right more than others so other people don't probably even think about it they're just going to the green flag and, and they'll deal with whatever they've got when they get there. So you've also got some, some um, rudimentary sort of uh, calculations that you've made that we, we effectively decided that Blair McConaughey is professional champion. For second, however, there's still 10 points in it between Carl Jones and Harry Yeah, So how do you see this possibly playing out? Yeah, so we'll, what I'll do is I'll keep typing in scores as people sort of are lining up. Uh, we saw Wes Payne there locking up a little bit as he was trying to get everything temperature in there. Uh, and we'll call out as it goes, but it's definitely tight. Carl Jones looks like he's fairly uh, okay in second place at the moment, but definitely there is uh, a third place up for grabs between Harry Yeah and Stephen Lyle. And we spoke yesterday about how he's got a, a quite badly sprained wrist um, and he's you know endurance over this half hour race is tricky so and we saw him he, he sort of was clinging on in there wasn't he yesterday doing a great job uh, but I wonder whether this morning he might be paying for that a little bit well, hopefully it may it may or may not have gone a little bit better overnight, but there is a 10 points we figure on drop scores now between Carl and Harry, so it could go either way depending on how fortunes go. But Carl had the edge yesterday in terms of positions. He finished fourth yesterday compared to Harry Ayres' sixth. He's got a chance now off the start to try and pick his way through the pack a bit more to gain a few more spots. The last couple of cars are just getting into position towards the back. Now wait for the green flag and the five-second board. Right, let's try this again, shall we? Our first race of Cage Room Finals weekend Sunday here. The red light's now come on. This time we will get a start this time by lights are out. It's a decent jump from Stephen Lyle from the front row of the grid. Also a good run from the second row of Wes Payne and Carl Jones. They're now two by two up towards Coppice for the first time. And it looks like on the inside line, Stephen Lyle will have the whole shot. But following through, past and second place goes Wes Payne. So Wes from third on the grid is up to second past Blair McConaughey. In fourth place there is Carl Jones. Fifth is now Harry Yett. And sixth with a good jump is Nick Allbones. So they come out through the right-hander at Charlie's. Now down Park straight for the first time. And already Carl Jones lining up in the slipstream behind Blair McConaughey. Harry Yett's going with him as they come up the hill towards Park Corner for the first time. Everyone appears to have got through cleanly. The air now under threat. There's already a flapping uh, right a driver's right-hand side wing on Harry Yett. So I'm not sure there was contact or not. But it seems that at least he's got that to deal with. And of course, if that starts flapping too much, he is possibly under the jurisdiction of the stewards. If he might get a black and orange flag, if he's not careful for a piece of bodywork that has to has to either come off itself by momentum or has to come the pits and have that, have that taken off. And he has to do with that. That's pretty much his chart for second place over. It can be, yeah. It's something to keep an eye out for. But it, but equally, um, it's flapping rear panel is not often that is not an uncommon sight in a catering race. Um, Carl Jones actually got the best start of everybody then at, uh, off the line. He just had no space to go and use it. But up into you know the park where we saw so much action yesterday, and I think that's going to repeat today. He uh, he did manage to easily get past Blair there. He, he drifted past and that and was done before we even got into the uh, uh, you know turning point. So yeah, West Payne great start and Carl Jones looking like the man on the on mission at the moment. Yeah, a win would certainly do his chances 
for second place in the championship, no harm at all. And if he is starting to quickly chase after the top two, he's doing so the right way. He's already on the back of Wes Payne, his second row mate, as they come up down the pit straight out of Barn for the first time. So with a fairly commanding lead already, Stephen Noll leads the way. Side by side for second as Carl Jones sweeps to the inside into Coppers Corner to take second place from Wes Payne and gets the job done before they turn him through a left-hander and go up the hill. Equally, Blair McConkey battling with Harry Ayer, and Harry was up the inside to make the move for fourth position. So they come out through this long right-hander of Charlie's and now onto the back straight at part for the second time. And Harrier has got the job done. So also is Nick Albo. So it looks like there was a mishap of some kind for Blair McConaughey. He's dropped back two spots. And here comes Nick then with the uh, flapping front-winged Harrier down the, the back straight. The top three trying to get away, but now the side-by-side -side for four. And Blair McConaughey, I'm not sure where his pace has gone in his initial couple of laps, but he's down to sixth under pressure from Angus McLean as well. Either just something's not right with that car or just... Blair's been a little bit unsettled in these first couple of laps. He just got pushed out of the train, Scott. If you get pushed to one side and you lose a bit of momentum, uh, there is, there's nothing to be gained back. So you, you often will lose multiple places because that little bit, that one mile, two mile an hour momentum shift uh, can really um, suffer. He will get his uh, brain activated, I'm sure. Um, but the other thing to consider is the sun. The sun can be quite bright in your eyes and, and it, the choice of visor can sometimes have an effect as well. So keep an eye for drivers who have got a, a sort of a tinted visor versus a clear one on today. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, tinted visors first and second. I think third place on West Payne has gone for a more clear option. So I spotted, I can see his eyes a bit more clearly. All side by side for fourth into Hall Benz between All Benz and Air, and All Benz manages to get through. So Harry Air actually either just allowed him to get through to avoid an accident, or Nick All Benz forced the issue and squeezed part into P4. So cracking start from Nick, who uh, was packing seventh on the grid, is up fourth with three place spots ready to fourth. Man on the mission this morning, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. That was, you know, as you say, it's single farm normally up um, past the commentary box here into Park uh, to, uh, to uh, Hall Benz. And, and I think he had just gone enough that, that, uh, that, that, that he had to back out of it. Harry thinking again about his uh, third place in the championship there, I imagine. Alan Curtis running well also. He started eighth on the grid and he is now still staying eighth at the moment, but he's keeping in touch with that leading group. So good run from Alan so far. We see Harry Edge just trying to come back at Nick as they come through the right-hander at, at Charlie's again. Still Blair McConaughey in the touch and also we've got Angus McLean in there too and now it's role reversal because Nick Albans is now his turn to come under attack from Harry Air. They go up the hill. Here's the uh, battle for fourth and here comes McConaughey with a good run up the inside and he also squeezes past two so McConaughey up another spot again. The 34 car, the provisional champion for the season in 270Rs after clinching it yesterday. He needed 16th place or better to get it. And yesterday he managed the second place. He wanted to get the victory as he always does. But he managed to pick up the runner-up spot in yesterday's race behind Steve and Lyle, and that was enough to give him provisionally the 2021 crown. It looks like it's sunset, but it's actually sunrise this morning because it's such a, a low, a, 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 a low rising sun at the moment in this uh, uh, fantastic autumnal morning here at Campbell Park. Already, Steve and Lyle has the lead of about roughly uh, about four tenths of a second. But now his battle for fourth continues on. It's still Harry Air and P4 through the mountains, and it's McConaughey, Allbones, McLean, Curtis. And there's been a change around for the leader spotted out the window, Chris. Carl Jones absolutely on a mission. He, uh, he's gone through uh, the Hall Benz in the lead that time round, and he's made that's a place every lap so far. And, and it looked at one point that Lyle had a quite comfortable lead. So, yeah, really good. There he is out in front now with Lyle following behind. Uh, and a little bit of a behind Lyle, that makes that's important for his third place um, attempt. I was going to say Harry Air couldn't afford to lose more places. We're going up the inside, back in, uh, Lyle up the inside again, back into turn one. So maybe these two have decided they might want to work together to, to spread the field out. But Harry Air doesn't want to lose any more places, and he's unfortunately got Blair McConaughey right behind him. Luke has experienced some deja vu from yesterday is Wes Payne because he's in the mix also in third place and he was in the leading trio in the battle that we had between Lyle and McConaughey yesterday and he was always in there with a shout and wasn't able to quite pick it up in, in that sense here's our scrap for fourth just coming to the shot just in the background out of Charlie's now in this uh, ever rising sun this morning here at Campbell Park the top we go through the shot still Jones from Lyle from Payne now the scrap's on for fourth between Harry Air and Blair McConaughey. They've pulled away now from Angus McLean, who's got past Nick Allbones. And now there's a scrap going on behind them, which with the 43 car of Alan Curtis and the number eight of Darren Cresswell. Curtis's car, the uh, silver car with the white roll bars, whilst it's the white, pink and blue machine of Darren Cresswell. In towards Mansfield now for lap the lap four on this occasion. Still plenty of time to go. It's a half an hour race. So a long time for these guys to wrestle these cars around this tight, technical and twisty Campbell Park circuit as the leaders make their way up towards the mountain complex. One of our favourite spots of the weekend because we have the essentially the ever, the, the ever, the, the um, everlasting uh, cage room uh, uh, flying or jumping competition at the mountain where drivers are trying to catch as much air as possible. 
th currently believe so far as we said yesterday was Gordon Soy yesterday after he got <laughs> only all four wheels off the ground but the rear of his car was higher than the front so he was definitely uh, braking to put some weight onto the front of the nose up now through the hall bends and into the hairpin so there goes Aaron McConaughey pulling away from McLean who in turn is pulling away from all bones he's got Curtis and Cresswell Tim Steele's in there as well as he's also now Oliver Smith and Oliver Smith we should talk about started 20th up to 12th there he is behind Tim Steele so again hadn't really sort of surprised too much in the first part of the season but particularly for Steston he really has just had a massive jump in pace and even probably he's some surprised where it's come from but he's been really impressive the last couple of races and we see that sometimes drivers just click with something they maybe try a different technique that works or just they happen to just work with the tracks that, that, that we have at, towards the tail end of the, the season rather than the front so definitely people have their favourites a little like Payne's looking to line up Lyle as well into the up here but we're splitting also into this is the McConaughey and Air battle so this is a sort of mid-pack battle going on there with a, we're separating into three groups we've got the front three then we've got a two sort of in their own in the middle and then this pack that we're looking at now is the, the third oh he's got a bit of contact there through Chris Kerb um, Alan Curtis pushed right out to the edge of the track yeah but Daryl Crosswell was off the road as well but he went off in simply because the battle that was going on in front of him which looked like it was Nick Allbones and Alan, and, and Alan Curtis and because of the contact they made Daryl Crosswell had to try and avoid it and ended up on the grass so he's got some work to do he may have lost a couple of places and may have lost out to maybe Tim Steele and also I think Oliver Smith but yes he has yeah because they both caught up now and Nick Allbones is a couple of places back it seems he's got work to do to pick up he's also lost out to Fraser Jones and David Morgan so Alan Curtis in he's now up to his eighth position there's now the scrap for ninth between Tim Steele and Oliver Smith now through the hall bends again Curtis and all bones so Nick's the ones that's lost out from that was Alan Curtis Scott past Nick that those two those two were the ones that made the contact and so as a result of that, Curtis has got through. Auburn's now chasing him, and now both Tim Steele and Oliver Smith have been drawn into that battle now as they turn through. And I think it looks like that Cresswell dropped a spot, a couple of spots to around about 13th, I think, as a result of that. So still plenty of time to go. 21 and a half minutes left in this uh, final race of the season for the Motel Cage from 7270R Championship. And the top three settling out nicely in the, in, in the league with a gap of 1.6 separating the top three. That's right, and these, yeah, it's all change there and that front pack. But yeah, everyone's chance to actually uh, breathe a little again. This is that kind of middle phase of that race now, that middle 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, here's Lyle out front with Carl Jones just following him on. So every time we come back to this battle, it's sort of swapped but they again have that slight gap over Wes Payne I'm wondering whether Wes is again we saw it yesterday didn't we he was sort of clean on in there and he sort of uh, it's the same position today but these two have definitely got a, a clean pair of heels right now and Wes did have one couple of points where he did fade back a little bit but they managed to come back towards them later in the race when they started battling so there's always a chance of these two start to get into it a little bit more as this race progresses into the second half that Wes Payne will start to come back at them Harry Ayres still fourth ahead of Blair McConaughey in fifth Harry Ayres the green and yellow so Team Lotus coloured car there is Stephen Lahr they're continuing on the top through tinted visors as they hot leap over the mountain then sweep into these hall bends where it's not a circuit that has too many overtaking opportunities but these small little nimble catrums can certainly squeeze into any uh, gap that they can find and it will certainly be an opportunity for anyone to try and make a move there's McLean, Nick Allbones and now this battle is coming on between Tim Steele, Alan Curtis and wow, and there's that, uh, Curtis has dropped back a couple of places from where he was, he was as high as 7th, he's now dropped behind Nick Allbones and Tim Steele, he's actually head of Oliver Smith so he's down from 7th to 9th and so looks like a mistake for Alan which is uh, so he lost a couple of places in the process it looks like the fastest lap could be really critical uh, in this race again for that third place in the trophy in the championship at the moment Lyle is, is leading the race but he's only one point ahead as behind um, uh, Harry Air. so we've seen Harry Air and Blair McConaughey they're coming across that gap towards that front group it seems like Harry Air does have some really good pace um, uh, but obviously if Blair gets past Air, then it puts a real pressure on and I think fastest lap might become critical yeah he might have a point there because that extra fastest lap mean it'll put them level on points but correct me if I'm wrong that would then give Stephen Lyle the third place because he would have more wins on countback. I think he would have, if he wins this race, it'd be four. But even if he doesn't, it'd still be three. So he would still be up there anyway. So, um, but ideally what he wants to do is get to stay in front. And when the race is 71, that's Oliver Smith getting edged out wide. And that seems him uh, getting a little, into a little bit of trouble as a result of that. That was Alan Curtis again. Oh, Alan. He's been in the, uh, he's had a, a lot of uh, adventures so far this this race, hasn't he? With the edge of the track. And, and like you say, he, he got initially pushed back just then, but he's, he's fighting his way back up. Great, great um, end of season for Alan Curtis here. You know, we said that it's netted and he sort of showed a, a good pace and he was on the front of the, the grid and he's actually sort of solidified that he started the qualifying yesterday not so well but actually he's moved forward in every race so far so this is the critical point Stephen Lowe will be driving as hard as he can not only to try and snatch that third place in the championship but of course to do that 
right now. He needs to try and make sure that he's got the fastest lap of the race as well. And Harry Ayres broken away from Blair McConaughey there. So because Blair's dropped back there. Uh, again, maybe like we said earlier, he's maybe suffering, got something either not quite right or the setup slightly changed and the, the sun or the, the temperature is not, not working for him at the moment. But Harry Ayres is definitely on a mission right now. Either that or Blair simply just thinking, I'm really champion. I don't need to get involved in too much. I'm just going to basically take it to the flag and get the points I need. Just Curtis to again. Absolutely confirm it. It's Curtis. You're right, he's at it again. He's on the back of Team Steel as they come down towards the left hander. Up the inside he goes and the uh, sort of uh, steel and uh, yellow coloured car still side by side with Curtis so he wasn't going to let it ha have it that easy and as they come back through still has managed to hold himself in front but what that has also done is closed everyone up behind him because now that's a scrap that's going with David Morgan and, and the recovering Oliver Smith and now look at this Curtis is under massive pressure for Morgan who tucks underneath the roll cage of Curtis now looks to the outside line that'll put him on the outside for the right hander at Park Corner meanwhile ahead of them Nick Albert is going side by side with Angus McLean so wherever you look you can tell it's end of season like end of term racing here because they're, they're just having a fantastic time out on track there's lots of battles going on this really is like a proper end of season fever pitch coming up to you now yeah it's, it's really good to see isn't it and uh, and, and and yeah McLean there getting stuck in again we we say kind of regularly it's hard work to come into a catering paddock and and put your car right at the front but he has absolutely inserted himself there in that front pack uh, obviously the front three have broken away and they've got quite a comfortable gap but we, you know we've got Harry Air coming over so this the stories are developing we're not even a halfway point of this race yet and and as we saw yesterday um, as we saw yesterday things will start to compress again as the battles intensify towards the end so this battle certainly one of the more intense in the field so far. Tim Still versus Alan Curtis, but they've got Smith and Morgan also on their tail as they come over the mountain once more and back into the hall bends. This is on currently lap eight. We still haven't hit half distance yet. Still about one and, what, one and three quarter minutes to go until we reach that. There goes All Bones, followed by McLean. Then a gap back to this quartet battling over what is coming at the moment. Eighth, ninth, tenth and eleventh place. So this is uh, firmly in the mid-pack at the moment. Across the line they come, Lion and Stern back down towards Coppice again. Right in front, uh, Carl Jones has, has retaken the lead, so Carl Jones back in front now ahead of Stephen Lyle in second place. Wes Payne is still third, but he's 2.7 seconds off the lead and he's dropping back and lap time wise. He's, he's lapping just about on the same pace at the moment, it seems, well, at least on that lap he was compared to Jones and Lyle, but overall just it seems they're the top two when they're not fighting too much have just about a little bit more edge in terms of pace to keep him at bay keep him at arm's length by a couple of seconds yeah and it's quite critical again for Lyle's championship that Jones has now taken that lead so there's a sort of three point swing each time that happens because he's got fastest lap as Jones so it moves Lyle back uh, by you know two points and then Harry Ayer solidifying his fourth place in the race at the moment uh, therefore he's looking good at the moment for that third place in the tra in the championship. Oliver Smith had a really hairy moment there. We tried to go around the outside of Alan Curtis, locked up, and as a result of that, he went round wide through Park Corner and actually lost out. Now back with our leaders, Carl Jones has got Stephen Lyle all over him as they come back over the mountain, so there's no nothing finished here just yet. Carl Jones still holds the fastest lap of the race, so as it stands right now, it's still going to be advantage Harry Air for the championship in terms of third place, we think at the moment, by four points. So on this process at the moment, what needs to happen now is... We need, well, Stephen Lyle needs to be able to get himself back into the lead. Wes Payne isn't too far away again. And there we also saw Harry Air, who not only pulled away quite a bit for Blair McConaughey, pace-wise, he is just about edging himself back towards him at Wes Payne. So that's going to be pleasing for him to try and get third in the championship. But Stephen Lyle, all he can do right now is both go for the fastest lap of the race and try and repass and stay ahead of Carl Jones. That's all he can do because ultimately that man right there in fourth, he's the deciding factor whether he goes, whether he gets himself third, third place in the points or not. Yeah, all, all Lyle can do is win and get the fastest lap, but Harry Air certainly, even with an injured wrist, looks like he is... Uh, switched on this morning um, and, and is ready to go. We've got Lyle going to the outside. We've seen the outside move around uh, Park Bend work a few times and it looks like he has got the momentum to make that stick. So again, quite a comfortable swap over there and Wes Payne doing it was just drifting around there, wasn't he? Uh, Harry Air is definitely closing that gap. So Wes Payne is not going to have a comfortable third place in this race. So I think this uh, could all uh, you know, compress again. And if they start battling between um, Payne and Air, we'll see McConaughey come back in as well. So personal best for Wes Payne in third place. Lyle just off the road there on the exit of the gooseneck. That's not a good place to be, is it, when you're trying to win this race? Carl Jones will twitch on the exit of Mansfield. So you can tell they're pushing. You can tell they're going for it um, because they both want this victory. They both want the bragging rights to go to the winter saying that I won the last race of the season because it's that momentum that you carry on into the winter and into the next season. If you can say that you were, the, if you win the last race, effectively, you are the person, effectively, when you go up to the next step, you're racing against the same drivers. You're the driver that they want to beat. So, effectively, you have the, the kind of the, the target, if you like, 
might go into next season, not just the champion, but also those who have been those drivers who have been the most successful towards the end of the year, because they're the ones that you look for in terms of the form, the drivers that you expect to be uh, at the front and pretty much getting the top results on the word go. And so Steve McLaren and Carl Jones definitely uh, put themselves into the mix as two drivers who we should definitely, if we're not already, looking at for next year, primarily for strong title challenges in 2022. Here comes Jones up the inside into turn one again, and again, it's quite a comfortable swap over there between the two of them, wasn't it? 13 minutes to go, there's still plenty of time, but McConaughey actually setting the fastest lap at that point, so are his temperatures now all up and is he ready to, to, to go? So we said that it's going to compress in, but nevertheless, these two are working together right now uh, and, and helping themselves pull away from pain, guaranteeing that top two. We're seeing Lyle up the inside again here, coming into uh, a park, and generally speaking, if you were trying to, uh, weren't working together, then you would defend that inside line. That's what you'd naturally do as a racing driver. So I think, although it's not working for them, is it? Because Payne's not dropping away just as quickly as we thought he might. The gap is still two seconds, and again, the harder these two find each other, the easier it is for the cars behind to start to close that gap in. But we saw that more than once yesterday in the race, not just the caterings, but in other championships yesterday that were on this timetable that race yesterday as well. Stephen Arl again for the second lap as accessor drifts a tiny bit wide on the exit of the gooseneck, just as the, the off camber nature of it as she plunged downhill just off a left hander of that of the gooseneck. And as you come back down towards Mansfield, it's quite a tricky section. So Blair McConaughey with that fast lap of the race is now starting to come back towards Harry Air. And of course, if these streaks start to compress, fourth and fifth will start to catch them as well. And that's a typical cage from story where if you've got the front group that starts to battle amongst each other, it then brings more and more cars behind to start to close in and make that leading train bigger and bigger. So it would not surprise me if in the next sort of roughly eight to ten minutes or so, we do eventually get possibly a five car train battle for the leading for podium places. Because if these three get into it too much, Aaron McConaughey are right there to take full advantage and get straight into the mix as well if they can get close enough in the next few laps. I don't think it's even, I think, it, I wouldn't even just predict it. I think that's almost a certainty at this point. It looks like that's going to happen um, because these three are not spreading out uh, even with a bit of working. Blair McConaughey again setting a fastest lap this time round. And these two are definitely noticeably cat catching up. And if they work together, they're definitely going to be able to um, get there. So was your spotter Scott? Uh, Wes Payne with the personal best, 138.5s that he's motoring along. He's actually uh, at least, what was that? That's practically uh, about half a second for six tenths per second quicker than anyone in the top two in front. So the only thing is Wes Payne could work. Where's Payne woken up this morning? So has Blair McConaughey, and he's also trying to push Harry Air and wants to try and catch them. So this could be quite an exciting crescendo, this final race of the championship, where the championship may be decided, but there are those second and third places, those other trophies to pick up for second and third of the championship on the, on the awards night for the next, in the next few weeks. Ultimately, they've got to go to two more people, but the which two people they're going to be have to be seen is Carl Jones with a little sideways on the exit of the goose neck, up the inside of the manfield, late on the brakes, he's got has, uh, Stephen Lyle, and he makes the move stick, but again, Wes Payne's in that position to kept to pounce on both of them. He's all over the back of Carl Jones after that shake gets it from Mansfield. It could have been now. Harry Air um, hasn't he's really catching them too much and Blair McConaughey's charge seems to have almost sort of suddenly halted a bit as he's stuck behind Harry Air. So he's got to try and get around him or try and hope that he can get past him and then possibly he might bring himself and Harry closer towards these top three as they start their scrap amongst each other and get amongst themselves. This really is now a case of the top three are going to start to hold each other up and fourth and fifth will do nothing but capitalise to get closer in the next few laps. Yep, looks like Carl Jones has probably done enough at this point, as long as he didn't make too many of all of those mistakes that we just saw there, to, to solidify that second place. So he would have to fall fair way down, I think, to affect that. But it's still absolutely on between Lyle and Air. If Air loses that place to McConaughey at some point and Lyle stays in front, uh, I think that will come down to a sort of tie-break scenario, which Lyle will win not based on wins. So yeah, it's, it's still building. We've still got 10 minutes to go. So these half an hour races, they give us that sort of three phases of the race where we have the, the initial panic at the first 10 minutes. We have a, a kind of settling in period in that middle 10 minutes and now we're heading into that what you're going to do and when you're going to do it it's a bit of planning a bit of working out and, and then see see where you want to be and what you think your speed is relative to everyone else I think there's been something's happened between briefly between Aaron McConaughey because not only are they a little bit further apart 1.1 seconds they both did 1 minute 40 lap times so I suspect that McConaughey's trying to attack Harry there's either been a bit of a point where there's been a bit of cross wires and they've almost made contact they've got very close and run each other wide McConaughey they just touch the grass on the inside of Chris Kerr and that just unsettles the car a little bit too much as well and it's just small things like that that can lose you so much time particularly when you've got a, a, a spec championship like this when cars are all identical and it's down to driver skill it really can be a case of you can lose so much time purely by making one small mistake like that yeah and, and 
and we saw it even with Carl Jones on that last lap. He just dropped one wheel onto the grass. He had to come out the throttle, and suddenly two people are actually attacking him. But he was comfortably in the lead before he turned into the bend. So the concentration levels are, uh, you know, immense. Um, you really, because of the narrowness of this track, you have to use every single inch of this track, every single bit of curb, every single bit of tarmac that you've got, even including up the little white line, so you know, to, to make sure you maximise all your time. Uh, and uh, you know. That means just a slight mistake, a slight oversteer moment, a slight bit of understeer, and you're going to be uh, drifting off onto the grass, which is obviously not where you want to be. There goes Tim Steele and Alan Curtis. They're still battling over eighth and ninth position. We've still got David Morgan battling away with now the recovering Daryl Cresswell and Oliver Smith. So Cresswell's got past Smith on this lap, so Smith is down to 12th. Not quite the resurgence through the field he was hoping for, but I've started for the back of the grid after he retired yesterday. He hasn't got any further than the mid-pack, so he's got a bit more work to do over the winter to keep himself a little bit more pace, but he was in the leading group at Stetson, so maybe the circuits with the longer straights might suit him a bit more. Across the line they go. 11th and 12th together. Cresswell and Smith. The lead gap, Carl Jones has woken up into the 38s now, 38.421, and also, Wes Payne did a 38.6, so both of them on pretty strong pace. It was Lyle was the one that lost out the pace on that occasion. 39.3. He was a full second slower than Carl Jones on that last lap. So, not only did he lose the position, he's also lost enough to hold back as we now go side by side with Darrell Cresswell trying to make a move here on uh, David Morgan. Looks to the outside and Smith is in there too. Watch for him darting around behind them both. Morgan holds onto the inside lines to get himself back in front for the moment. Cresswell sticks to his left hand side through that right outside of Chris Curve, and we've been here before. Where Cresswell's been off the road for the second time and off into the grass and into the is he gonna keep it out of the tires? That's very close, but good car control. And I think Darrell Cresswell's heart must have been in his mouth for a second there, but he just about gets it back through. I, I think like you're saying as me, I thought that was going straight towards the tires, but somehow he kept it off. Just enough grip on that grass today for him, wasn't there? That was a uh, would have like you say, he would have scared him. It certainly scared me in the commentary box here. He looked like he was headed towards that barrier, but managed to make it uh, stay on the track. So congratulations. And to be fair, I was just about to say he's not scared of hanging around the outside we saw that a couple of times yesterday and he's really got that nailed but that time he just dropped his outside wheels onto the grass and it cost him a lot of time Tim still having a fine race in seventh place there's Alan Curtis who not quite matched him able to match the same form he had at Snetterton but he's still doing a grand job and keeping up towards the front he'll certainly be able to watch for next year hopefully he's made a bit, bit of stride in his pace if he moves up to 310 R's and you see behind him is Morgan. Now he's got that gap back now to what is now Michael Curley because Michael Curley's got past. I think Oliver Smith possibly looks like he tried to, again, have to back off to not possibly get involved in what could have been an incident for Darrell Cresswell. Because of that, he's now lost out to... Um, in fact, Smith has dropped down to 16. So I, think, I didn't quite see where he was involved in that. Was, maybe he just went off in sympathy, but um, he's dropped down to 16th, 17th place. So either he's had an issue or he's, I think he's had more of a problem with that because he's come across the line, but he's down in 18th place. So I didn't see him go off or have a problem. So just probably a legacy of him trying to avoid what happened to Daryl. It can be, and your eye line could be taken over to the side. He may have, like you say, have a sympathy, he sort of dropped his wheels on the grass as well. Every time we come back to this lead battle, it's, it's changed, isn't it? It's all changed, whether it's spreading out or compressing back together. But what it does look like at this point is that this, the, the, the chasing two of Air and McConaughey don't look like their eye are actually going to catch enough. Every time that Lyle gets in front, uh, he obviously swings the championship back towards himself, but he's still that couple of points away from what he needs. So he will need to win this race with fastest lap and, and, and Air will still need to lose that position to McConaughey to actually secure that third place. So the uphill battle with only five minutes to go because he hasn't ticked most of those boxes just yet. And don't count out Wes Payne for a second. He'll be in the mix all the way to the end if he can keep with them in third place. He's every chance that he could pounce on these two if there's any kind of misdemeanor. If they have a slip up, if they get into each other, which I'm sure the pair don't want to do, particularly Stephen doesn't because he wants to try and get his best, give himself the best possible chance uh, uh, to try and get third place and just hope that some results go his way. First of all, the thing he needs, of course, is the fastest lap of the race, which is currently still held by the provisional champion, Blair McConaughey. He's still back in fifth. He's now 2.4 seconds back on Harry Air. So whether he's just resigned himself to the fact that he's probably not going to win this race and get himself the, the perfect end that he wanted. So he's simply sitting back, looking to bank the points and just get the result he needs to um, uh, essentially provisionally t totally wrap things up as now we go back towards the leaders and still Stephen Lyle manages to get himself back in front, up the inside. So back into the lead he goes. And it's now Jones in second place and Wes Payne again just closing back into those top two and every real chance he could squeeze through. He would love to end the season with a win. He's come so close on more than one occasion. Uh, West Payne's best result so far this year has been uh, two second, pla uh, second place at Croft. So 
he has come close, he has been on the podium more than once this year, but he just hasn't reached the top spot. And the pace he's showing, he's in there, he's got the pace. It's just that frustration of not being able to get around the cars in front because they're just about on the same place, if not a little bit faster. And that's, he just needs to have that small little bit of an edge to try and get past them both in these next three minutes. Yeah, uh, and it, it's one of the, it's the nature of this track is that you can only sort of make one place per, per lap, whereas the Stettard and something like that changes place position all the time and therefore it's more of a strategy game. This one is definitely a matter of timing your sort of late moves, but you certainly want to be making that move forward. He's been sat in third place for the majority of both these races, hasn't he? Just hanging on there. It was uh, McConaughey up front yesterday, but uh, Wes Payne's been involved in that battle. Anyway, uh, we had um, Jones who yesterday dropped back a little bit further back than we might expect, um, but he's been consistent force as well as Lyle. So, yeah, McConaughey just doesn't seem to have, um, you know, either he hasn't come alive this morning yet, has he? He's got that fastest lap though, so he did say he wanted that fastest lap. He just not quite been able to compete for that win. So whatever it is, he's definitely got an issue that he has, uh, he's having to manage. Here goes McLean and Allbones having a scrap still for sixth position, very equally matched. And Allbones gets in the toe, darts out, looks towards the left hander at Coppice and neatly pick picks up position. Thank you, Angus. I'll have that if you don't mind. Up into P6 he goes. Leaders back towards Park Corner again. We're on the, I think, potentially the third to last lap. We might might have time for two more maybe depending on how quick this up goes we've got two minutes 45 to go and a top lap is about one minute 39 one minute 40 so um given the time we've got it's not going to take them a minute to get back around to the start finish line i don't think so we should uh, possibly have this and maybe two more laps if at least one He's Mansfield, they go. Where's Payne still keeping close on the last lap? He was the second fastest out of the three cars in that leap out. The fastest was Stephen Lyle. Now Carl Jones is back in front. He's now got to try and uh, defend that lead if he can for these next couple of laps. He turns back through the mountain. Jones, Lyle, there's Wes Payne in third. Little leap as they come back over the crest. Back into the hall bends. So Lyle now has got to work out how do I win this race and get fastest lap. He might not know all the sort of permutations while he's in the cockpit, of course, but that is what he ultimately has to do. And even then it still relies on Harry uh, Hare losing a position. But Carl Jones has been slow out of Mansfield a couple of times now. It's interesting to see. And, and there Lyle was right on his t uh, tail. And, and that's not going to help him in his pursuit of getting a fastest lap because he's being held up through that section. And, and we saw uh, Jones drop a wheel. There's a little bit of hand signaling there going on. So they are still working together, just desperate to keep that uh, position. Uh, and like I say, Carl Jones comfortable. I say comfortable. He's only a few points ahead of uh, Harry Air in that championship position. But it's been in the, the way the race has panned out. I think we're, we're, he's looking okay for second place. It was either pointers who were left to go past or wagging his finger going, no, no, you're not coming past. That was definitely a point that one, Scott. <laughs> Taxes between catering and drivers, surely not. Different, different uh, fingers for the other. <laughs> <laughs> Less said about it, the better, I think. Uh, anyway, up into towards Park Corner with about two laps to go. Up to the right hander they come now for the, I'm sure the second to last time, uh, because they crossed the line with, yeah, 28 minutes and 14 seconds complete. I think if it was enough, not enough time, it would have been about 28 minutes, 20 seconds. They've got just about enough time, I think, for this and maybe one more lap. So we'll see how this works out. Down the hill again. Where's Payne? Still hasn't gone away. Still in third place there at the back of the queue. The kind of pearlescent coloured car at the back of the pack and now they're all closing back up exiting Mansfield up towards I wonder if now possibly the temporary truce that Jones and Lyle had trying to work together might have to be broken now because we're getting to the point we have to decide who wins this race it's going to be one of these three I'm certain whereas Payne can still definitely win it here and it's a great exit off of the uh, mountain as I think there was a hold up there between Carl Jones and Stephen I think either Jones got a shaky exit off the mountain Lyle had to check up behind him Where's Payne's all over him so as they come on to what should be I think the last lap of the race they're just about I think it's going to be a pretty close run the flag. I think it will be coming on to the last lap. I think they'll, they'll get there in time. But Wes Payne done that sitting brief, watching everyone, clinging on where he needed to, just doing enough. But Carl Jones currently really clinging on in there. He's, his car can be extremely wide. And you can see he's not offering the inside line this time, is he? They are both together. And Wes Payne might get him around the outside if he's got the momentum. No, he couldn't make it stick that time. But Wes Payne is definitely in a good position at the moment if these two keep holding themselves up like this. Incredible stuff at the moment between this, these three as they come up through Charlie's for the last time. Now the gloves are off. No more truces, no more working together. This is an out and out battle. And what's interesting here is that Stephen Lyle's not really close enough to make a challenge on the back straight up towards Park Corner. Where's Payne's in the toe though? He might well get himself into a good position to line himself up for a move. And here he comes, second place. They're side by side for the lead to Park Corner. Up the inside goes Lyle. Payne will try to fall him through as Jones leaves the door open on the exit of the right hander. Now he's sweeping this way and that, looking to the outside, but Jones parks his car right in the middle of the road on the apex to the corner through. 
Chris Corner. That was going to work for Payne. He looked around the outside. It's not going to work into the gooseneck. You can't go side by side into the gooseneck. You can, but you're mad if you try it. Through the left-hander, a little sideways from Jones and from West Payne. He's really throwing the car around down towards the left-hander at Mansfield. Now they come out through the left-hander and have a sprint towards the mountain. Three of them all together. Lyle in front. We said, we said Park Bend is so important, didn't we? The crescendo up there, and, and you said he was too far back, but actually the power of the toe this time, he managed to shove it down the inside, and this is definitely advantage, Lyle, for this win. But Jones is now, we've seen him a bit slow through this section. He has managed to get out there and, and actually ahead of uh, Payne, so it's looking like this order might stay to the line, but you never know, we're the last day, last race of this championship season. This will be, effectively, if he gets the chequered flag, his fourth win out of the last six races, which will certainly mark him out as someone to watch for next season. He's made a brilliant impact since he, since he got himself towards the front. West Payne's dropped back a little bit with a problem there as he comes up to the chequered flag. But a fourth win out of six races and a win in the final race of the season. Punches the air with delight. Stephen Lahr picks up victory in the final Motile Catrium 7 270R race of the season. He beats Carl Jones to the line by three tenths of a second. And West Payne dropped back in the end. There's a cart off the road. That is Lydia Gould that's gone off into the tyres, but she's managed to rebound back onto the back across the track West Pay picks up third meanwhile Harry O is fourth the provisional champion Blair McConaughey finishes his 2021 title winning campaign with fifth Angus McLean will be looking forward to next year in 310 hours with sixth and then the battle of a seventh to the line between Team Steel and the Curtis Curtis moves out it's side by side to the line and Team Steel just pips Curtis to the flag by the massive margin of 0.125 of a second they're looking pretty close and then they're all coming across the line to finish off the season David Morgan ninth Nick Allbones rounds out the top ten and then we look at the rest of the pack as they come through 11th for 4 uh, for Gaunt 12th for Fraser Jones Peter Wells 13th he'll be disappointed Peter Wells he was a bit further back than he wanted to be Cresswell 14th then Curly Cox Oliver Smith down in 13th after his mishaps earlier on and then it will be the last couple of the cars across the line will be Cook and then Lydia Gould who had that off on the last lap as well but Stephen Lyle for the fourth time this year rounds off 2021 in the best way possible he might well have just lost out third of the championship but even so despite the fact he didn't uh, turn up on the grid until he missed the, missing the first he missed the first round to get fourth of the championship to recover as well as he has done mega season absolutely brilliant season yeah I mean so had he been there for that first round who knows what would have happened because you know he, he came along and, and immediately started fighting for the battle didn't he but yeah it does look like provisionally we've got Blair Mark on he um you know, winning the championship as we said yesterday 283 points Carl Jones coming in second with 261 Harry Eyre 258 and then Stephen Lyle 256 with Wes Payne just behind that so uh, great racing all year from these guys fantastic stuff there can only be one champion and finally it's third time lucky for Blair he came so close twice before in the past couple of years and now he's finally got it so the final race of the season for the 270R Stephen Lahr picks his fourth win of the season from Carl Jones and Wes Payne in third Harry Air fourth the provisional champion Blair McConaughey in fifth then it's Angus McLean Tim Steele Alan Curtis David Morgan and Nick Allbones rounding out the top ten then Roger Gaunt Fraser Jones Peter Wales Daryl Cresswell Michael Curley John Cox Oliver Smith who dropped back earlier on Duncan Cook Lydia Gould who recovered from a mishap in the race earlier so well done to everyone of the 270 hours I hope you see the majority if not all of them moving up into 310 hours next year so that's one catering race in the bag one catering season in the bag for this weekend